all right, copying other people's work. Is it good? Is it bad? Is it going to make you better? Is it going to make you worse? Let's get into it. All right, before I get any further, I want to ask you guys, who would you like to see me do a uh, master copy of? What are some of your favorite uh, painters that you would like to see a painting done in their style? Also, uh, for those of you who, ha who have done master copies, whether on your own or in a class, like what did you learn from it? Um, who did you, what master did you copy and, and what did you take away from it? And, and would you recommend it uh, for other artists to try? Uh, so I'm going to talk about this over a time lapse here of me doing a copy um, of a portrait done by John Singer Sargent. If you don't know who that is, please stop this video and look him up right now. Um, so copying other people's work, uh, I personally think it's great. Um, it's, it's not great to you know go and try and sell it or pawn it off as your own, but it is a great way to paint the way you want to paint and you know you don't have to find some you know old master that painted a hundred years ago like you can find somebody today that paints that you really like and wish you could paint like in you know and give it a shot and try to paint it I actually did copy a lot like I wasn't doing it as an exercise I was just doing it because I was you know nine ten years old when I was uh usually like doing like a lot of watercolors I would just see other good watercolor paintings and <laughs> You know, I was just like, oh, I'm going to paint that. And I would just paint it from another watercolor painting. I didn't think twice about it. Uh, but looking back, it probably really helped me kind of develop a style and a taste in, in what I like. And, you know, definitely probably helped me subconsciously on, on certain things and how to do things and the way I work. Um, but it's very, very helpful because it's one thing to look at a painting and see the colors and the, the brush strokes and the values and everything. It's another thing to actually have those colors on your palette and you, you know, putting those on your canvas and, and doing it yourself and having that painting actually in your hands. It's, it's, it's a really fun experience. And it's a lot of the times you're going to, you're going to learn things that you didn't even know you needed to learn. Um, it's kind of how I went into doing this one. I kind of just mainly focused on the color and as much as I could, the brushwork. Uh, it's very difficult to try and replicate, you know, Sargent's brushwork. Uh, so I kind of just knew that was probably not going to work out that great. But the colors was very, very interesting. You know, I, I found myself desaturating the skin tones a lot more um, than I naturally would which was a very interesting and good, good learning experience for me. But, you know, the thing about these copies is that so much of painting is problem solving. And a lot of the problems that you're having have already been solved by other artists and other painters. And so it's good to kind of, you know, paint in their trail, like in, you know, their, path that they've already figured out these problems in, in these paintings, you know, painting paintings that they solved, you know, problems with, whether it be light, color, value, perspective, you know, any of that. It's, you know, because they've been able to kind of, because when you paint, you, you, you see something, you know, a landscape, a person, you know, whatever it is you're painting. And I feel like an aspect of painting is simplifying it to be, you know, because you can't put every single little detail, um, into a painting. I guess you're doing hyper-realism or something like that. But a lot of times, you know, even hyper-realism, because you, you see something and you have to choose what is going to go on the canvas. You know, you have to choose where you're going to crop it. You're going to have to choose what you focus on, what you, what you leave out and, and, you know, what you show and what you don't show. So kind of having that step already done for you, it's kind of like a good training wheels way to see how maybe you could do that in the future. Um, so if you do go ahead and do a copy, um, there's some things that you can do to kind of get more out of it. Uh, first is choose someone you really like or someone who does something very well that you want to get better at. Um, so like if they're, if you really want to get better at, you know, using color you know find somebody who you really admire their color and you know do it somebody that you like because there's all different opinions on painters like don't just do it because 
everybody thinks this person's great or that person's great. Do it on, you know, specifically what you want to get better at. And, and linked to that is, is don't try and just copy their painting just in general, like, like have a specific one or two things that you really want to focus on. Like I said, on this one, I really mainly wanted to focus on color and then secondary, if I could brush work. Um, cause if you're trying to do everything and you're just trying to just r completely replicate it, you're not, you know, and I feel like the best, uh, mindset to fully absorb all that you're learning. And it's kind of a lot to take on. Cause I mean, these are masters we're copying here. So the thought that you're going to be able to, um, absorb, you know, 10 different things is, is just probably not going to happen. So like, you know, pick a certain thing that you want to get better at and, and, and just focus your copy on breaking that one thing down and understanding it the best, uh, that you can. Also, you don't have to do an entire painting. There can be a certain section of a painting. You can paint just, you know, an, an eye of a portrait or a hand or, or you way like, you know, you like the way someone did a tree. You just gonna, I'm just going to paint that tree and see if I can get it the way they did it. Um, you know, you don't have to spend days and days on a giant uh, painting doing the, in, the entire thing. Um, another thing is don't worry about mistakes. Uh, you're gonna make mistakes like it's just gonna happen if you you know this is a learning uh, exercise so don't beat yourself up if it's not looking exactly like the master it's not going to they're a master it's not gonna you know it's not gonna happen uh, so you know be willing to fail you know I always I think I like to think of this exercise a lot as um when I used to uh, train and play football, a, a, a drill we would do would be running downhill. Like you'd find a hill with a slight grade and you'd run down it to get your legs and your muscles to feel what it's like to run faster than you normally can. And a lot of times you would fall and that'd be a good sign because that means that you're pushing yourself past what you're capable of. And you have to be willing to fall to you know get past certain plateaus in your work and to you know, push yourself beyond what you can do. So do not be afraid to fail when doing this exercise. Another thing is don't worry about trying to fully replicate the uh, painter's process. Kind of just paint it, you know, the way you would paint it, just, just how you naturally paint it. And a lot of times their process will kind of reveal itself. You'll kind of realize like, oh, like I can't, make this type of mark unless I had, you know, put a darker layer down first or I had done this or that. And you'll kind of, by the end of the painting, have a better understanding of how uh, you can, you know, replicate the process or certain, you know, techniques that you thought they probably use. Like I definitely learned that doing this one. I kind of realized you know, certain things, you know, cause I'd come to certain parts and be like, Ooh, I probably should have laid down like a darker layer, bef you know, base layer first. That way I could put this bold lighter stroke over top. Um, you know, just small things like that. You'll learn as you, as you go and, and then paint, paint the painting and take your time. You know, there's no rush, like really take your time and, and, really think kind of about what you're doing. Don't overthink it. Don't be timid again, you know, but you know, for the things that you are focusing on, like when I was trying, you know, I did try my best to try and replicate the brush work in this. And I did find myself holding the brush and maneuvering the brush in ways I never had before. And, you know, the thing with Sargent is his, his brush work can be so simple sometimes like a, you know, he'll have like one brush stroke that just does so much in communicating, you know, an aspect within the portrait. And, you know, that was, <laughs> it's kind of difficult. It's really hard to, cause you know, if you're, there's certain strand like uh, brush strokes in the hair of this piece that you can tell he just used one brush stroke and just kind of just boom, just pulled it across the hair and it, you know, creates this illusion of like an entire chunk of hair. Normally I would be 
like wanting to get in there with a smaller brush and kind of break it down and have little choppier brush strokes. Um, but I, I took my time. I was like, all right, this is uncomfortable for me, but I'm just going to push myself through it and do it and see what it feels like. And it was great. You know, that's, that's how you learn is doing things that, you know, you're not used to doing and be open to try different things. You know, don't, do not think of this as don't have the end goal. Like it has to be a good painting when I'm done. Like don't, you know, be willing to mess it up, be willing to try things that could, you know, mess up the painting. I mean, you can always scrape, you know, off the part that you messed up and just keep painting. But, you know, this is the time to try things. This is the time to fail. This is the time to push yourself and explore different ways of doing things that you never would have thought to do. Like that's how you build and grow. If you don't try different things, if you don't do things differently, your paintings aren't going to be different than they are now. They're, your paintings are just going to stay the same. They're not going to progress and get better. If you like this video, please hit the subscribe button. I also offer you this video and this video. Please choose one. They're both good.